Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, the title of this talk is Monastic Complex at, at Mama. I have used uh, quotation marks because it's not clear really if it's a monastic site or no. We will see, we will see in course of the of this talk uh, what, what do I mean with that. Um, I'm a four year of my PhD. I'm writing about Colcom Roabi and the landscape. And I found in the landscape of Colcom Roabi uh, this complex, Old Mama. And uh, this is the most important monument in the area of Colcom Roabi. So, uh, of course, I have to study this. And they share the the landscape and um, the results I'm presenting today, um, these are the, the newest uh, results we have about Old Mama and I'm I'm presenting the first time today for you. So it's a, it's a world premiere. And as you see, you can see I'm at Old Mama at the moment. So I <laughs> to, uh, to to show you. This um, the picture, this drawing I'm, I'm showing the, in, in this first uh, slide is um, appeared in the Thomas Cook um, autumnal rumbles in New Key and shows the three churches and uh, the romantic view of this beholder looking up the churches in the landscape of Old Mama. And um, this is indeed a very romantic place, a very mysterious place, uh, and the landscape is a, is an important component on, on on this on this complex. So first of all, we 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 start with the landscape of the of of the of Otmama. We see the complex uh, here on the left half of the of the of the screen, and on the foot of Turlock Hill, and um, we see Monin Mountain on the background and uh, uh, Copanawala and, and, and so on. We see the uh, Ponacluga Bay. And to the right, we see tiny uh, Corcom Roavi. Corcom Roavi is only 1.5 kilometers away. And we see, we know that this area, probably every of you knows the north of the Boren. And it's a very, um, uh, it's a, a it have very fertile valleys. There is water there. There is a, the the proximity to the coast uh, is also um, offers uh, oysters and 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 and, and a shelter um, harbors and and so it was always a, a a very good place to to settle. That's why there has have been populated since six thousand years, and it's not surprising that uh, this monastery probably is very very old. Um, here we have a um, satellite picture of the north of the Buran, and you see the Buran is starting here. It's pretty clear. Um, uh, the the penis old mama in this in this context. Uh, we see. So there is a clear natural um, bo um, boundary in this. It's a border where the where the border started. We if we come from Galway, let's say we see the Boran Hills on the um, on the background, and they are really a, a border, uh, a territorial border. border. And uh, actually, it's the actual border between County Galway and County Clare between the historical provinces of uh, Connacht and Munster. And I think it was, it is a very, very old border. And um, not only because, I mean, the, the natural uh, characteristics of, the, of this place make a natural border and was so assumed by the people, the prehistoric people living in there. We, this and this, 3D effect uh, image. We can see it better. The 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 uh, Abbey Hill, Otmama Hill, Turlock Hill, um, enclosing this valley, and the border is running there. So we see also that there's an entrance to this valley to the north, and it's the marked by the Corker Pass, and it's probably a very old route also because it's the is the entrance to this valley. And if you know, this is also pretty impressive. Um, and we have Turlock Hill. Um, 
probably many of you know that in the top of the Trullo Hill, we have a, uh, a prehistoric complex. It has been um, it's, it's considered as a, as a Neolithic uh, complex, but there is no really a clear date for, for this place. This, um, uh, these images I have it from, uh, from an Insta project from 2008 from uh, Ronan Hennessy. And here we see the main enclosure. It's a huge enclosure with many similar entrances and this uh, gap in the, in the mountain, this natural thing is enclosed, this, this, this gap, this make it also more, even more mysterious. Nobody really knows how it works or what for it was. And then the other part of the plateau to the south, we have this remains of over 160 hood sites and uh, also a, a very strange structure, like look like a, like have been destroyed and constructed many times. Is uh, there is also a cairn, a, a funerary monument, and uh, it's it's completely unknown what for it was, but what it seems to be is uh, uh, probably um, assembly place where people will meet. I mean, boundaries were places when these things happen. People will meet in there. There will be uh, ceremonies. And um, and for sure was a place of a very strong symbolic meaning. The boundary, the landscape, and everything make this place special. And then it's not only Turlock Hill then appears Old Mama on the foot of this, and then later and and at the end of the 12th century, beginning of 13th century, Corcoran Roavi, very close to that. So this place. Um, there is a continuity in the importance of this place, and we're going to explain to explore this. Uh, here we have in the uh, Old Mama in the in the Glenamanag, the, the Valley of the Monks. So, what this valley was called, we don't know if there were the the, the monks, the Cistercian monks from Corcoran Abbey, or monks in Old Mama. Uh, we don't know that, but this place uh, has something. Uh, we come closer now as a close up to the 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 side valley where old mama where the old mama is situated i have marked the outer enclosure in white more or less where the uh, we know there was uh, the complex of old mama and this little square blue square is the tober coleman this is the holy well and um and probably belong to to this uh, complex I'm gonna talk also about this, uh, the complex itself, and and I have made a schema and uh, so with the elements uh, that we know uh, belong to this complex. We have the uh, different walls, enclosure walls from different time periods. Uh, we have also uh, agricultural infrastructure like these elevated terraces. They are uh, artificial. They are, they are people made. Uh, then we have. Um, Different buildings, besides from the three churches, uh, we have uh, these buildings marked in, marked in yellow. And uh, the most thrilling, uh, the most um, exciting element of this of this uh, complex is the mill uh, race uh, and the site of the mill. This is really uh, we will talk about about this, and we have also a. Uh, 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 a high cross base. Uh, that is also an, another element of this complex. So we start with the uh, Tober Coleman. This is the the holy well to the uh, northeast of the uh, of the complex. This is this picture is from last year, and it's it's a very popular destination for walkers. But there's also some pilgrims going there. There are little birches and and, and statues and so on that people have left there, and used to be more popular uh, with uh, more pilgrims in the 19th century. Uh, we don't know how old this uh, well is and how old is the, the pilgrimage to this place, but the name Coleman relates directly with the very few um, mentions we have in documents about the uh, old mama. We have, uh, that oh mama, the, the, this complex was related to three Saint Colmans or three Colmans, and um, one of them is maybe uh, Colman Macdois, who uh, 
It's believed to have lived in the Eagles Rock, like four, four kilometers to the south of Otmama in a hermitage. And that he's, he is also the alleged founder of uh, the monastery of Kilmagdoa, which is uh, not far away from Otmama. Uh, but we don't really know if who were these Colmans and if Kolmagdoa was living there or, uh, or he founded this place or not. But it has the potential to be a foundation from the from the sixth or seventh century uh, Otmama. Um, this well here, and you see the monastery is on the on the far right of the of the picture. Um, the water here is not only in this well, but all around the place there are uh, springs. So there is a there is a water. Um, uh, <laughs> We have a we have water in this area and it's uh, pouring out in every every possible place here. If you go there, you will see uh, water running every uh, everywhere. And this water was collected and uh, was uh, um, directed to a artificial channel and um, have this graphic illustrated. This is uh, how the water was collected and pass through a to a stream this is a stream passing through the middle of the monastery and this is a very important element in the complex and in the in uh, of out mama so this water was ready collected and um brought to this to the mill race i don't know if you can uh recognize it in the middle of the of the picture i have more more pictures of of this Going, this is looking to the to the west, where the drone is looking to the to the west now. Uh, and now we have looking again from the west, but on the on the ground level, and you see the dimensions of this mill race. Uh, the the road there is two meters long, so you have an idea. The the mill race is more or less uh, fifty meter long uh, and uh, five to six meter wide. And on the back of the of the picture of the photograph you see uh, is uh, is uh, the holy well. So from there is the water is coming, and they people who construct this manage to collect the water and bring it there. This is looking to the east, so the direction uh, old mama complex, and you see how big it is. And at the end of this mill race, there is a uh, semicircular pond this is the mill pond and is a typical is typical for the infrastructure of mills and here is the site of the mill um it's now difficult to imagine so i got this uh reconstruction this is uh this is a fantastic artist philip armstrong he made this very charming reconstructions based on archaeological um uh, research and this is a reconstruction of a, of a mill in Nendrum. It's a 10th century mill, but the original mill was from the 7th century. So we have in Ireland mills from the 7th century at least. And this represents uh, um, an horizontal mill. So the, the mill wheel is lies horizontally, as you can see in this, in this uh, reconstruction drawing. And uh, you see also the mill race. So they can control the the water coming there so you can uh, collect the water there until you have enough water and then let it run and and mill your your grain or whatever you use in this uh, you're using the mill for and the mill was a it's a great source of income and it also means that you have enough people to uh, to use it because it was a very expensive thing to do and it's also a technical unbelievable um installation so we have this at old mama uh now we will talk about let's go little by little to the to the complex we have the um the uh walls they are different from different time periods and uh, maybe you have here that the monasteries in ireland they will have volumes the, they are the enclosure walls and this was uh, defined different areas within the the complex, and these areas have different meanings. And the central area, where this, the two churches in this case in Otmama are situated, is the 
sometimes called the the sanctus, is the, the the holiest place, and no everybody was allowed to go in there. We don't know who was who was in in Old Mama, but in, this was they had a, a meaning, and um, the, uh, also they defend the activities done in this area, and also the people restrict the entrance to certain people, and this. These walls are also mark also sanctuaries, so um, people can find refuge in this uh, in this uh, in this monasteries and these places. Um, this is a, again a reconstruction from uh, Philip Armstrong uh, from the uh, Lulimore Monastery in Kildare, and uh, here you see the churches in the in the in the in the middle enclosure and. Um, and the little houses all around and the different activities. Uh, you have orchards and you have the animals and, uh, and burials and you see a high cross also close to the wooden churches because the first churches were made in wood probably or even we don't have any remains yet, uh, found any remains yet, but we can imagine maybe in Old Mama we have also first wooden churches, but we don't know, we can just speculate. But we have the walls, and we, there is no excavation at Old Mama. So what we know is what, what we can see. Uh, but we see we can see that there are all the walls and have been reconstructed and and so on. Uh, we go apart from the churches. There are three churches at Old Mama. We see other buildings there. I have marked this in yellow, and it's just uh, or, uh, for orientation because. As I say, we, we have no excavation there. These houses that will be made for people to live or also um, granaries. I mean, uh, you need uh, buildings to storage stuff and so on. And uh, it's possible that this maybe these buildings were even newer and they were it was a little settlement there even after the monastery or whatever it was stopped functioning. The OC map, uh, the 25 inch OC map, and the other, uh, actually, all the, the historic uh, maps, they label this place like the, the old town of Old Mama, the site of the old town. So it was a town there, probably. And um, uh, there was apparently was a, a um, um, Shell me then somewhere, but nobody knows what it what is it what it is. So I think we 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 have a lot to find out about this this settlement. But the only thing we know now is like the houses were orientated uh, to the enclosure, so they're still respecting this order. Um, it's an interesting issue. This uh, this town, this settlement uh, at Old Mama. Then. Um, we have, um, as I say, a cross passes. Is I have marked it with a red uh, X. Uh, this is not in situ, as you can see, um, but already uh, Westrop uh, they, they described this basis, and it was more or less in the place where it is now. And um, go back. And uh, you see in the position what it is. It's uh, um, normally these crosses. They mark uh, entrance. Could uh, mark entrances. They mark. Uh, they market uh, marketplaces and so on. But also the entrance to these these enclosures. And it's possible that there was the entrance of the enclosure of Obama, because we have between these few walls that we have here. This the gray. They were gray ones. Uh, running from the north to the south, there is a, a hollow way. It's just a bit deeper the the ground in this and they this um, directing to the two churches. So it's possible that it was uh, one of the entrances to Old Mama, especially because the road will come. The visitors will come from the north, and I mean the the um, nowadays if you are coming from the Corker Pass and just walk over, you come also from the north. So this could be the entrance. Uh, of the monastery and the buses might be close to it. We don't have the cross. We don't know where the cross went. And then we have uh, 
Other walls, we have this elevated terraces. As I say, um, they are marked in green and uh, from different periods. And this very um, narrow stripes, uh, these fields, uh, they, they, are, uh, they are separated with, they, by field walls. They are not like the modern field walls. They look much different. They have been reconstructed. And um, uh, but you still can can go and see them, and uh, they are probably of medieval precedence, but it's, we don't know. We we don't know, and um, uh, we come. We think we are now at the the core of of the complex, which are the churches. We have three churches in Old Mama. We have two churches in the middle, in the central area, and a third one, the center, in a, in another another area of the church. And it look of, of the of the complex, and it looks also different. This is church one. The churches doesn't have names, so we call it church one, church two, and church three. Church one is the bigger one, and has a traviated door, as you see on the west. Um, on the south, two little windows. To lancet windows, round headed lancet windows, and it's at the chancel and other chancel in the east. Uh, in this picture, uh, we see also the second charge, which is very close to the, to the first one, which is charge two, and it's much smaller. Uh, it had a rounded entrance, a round arched entrance. Uh, it's similar to charge one. But as I say, smaller and this the entrance look a bit different, but they are both orientated in the same direction. They are they are oriented in the same direction to the east. Um, and then we have church tree, which is has another orientation, is more northeast. And uh, it looks also the fabric it looks different from the others. And um uh it's uh, outside the central area, as I say. They will be in the, in the circle, the second enclosure, and um, also the entrance of this church is on the south and not on the west, like the other churches. So I'm presenting. This is a preliminary um, presentation of my of my results. Um, this uh, was a surprise because the church, let's say the green church, was dated more or less, uh, even if I haven't been any complete uh, architectural analysis of these churches, and I wasn't able to do it a complete analysis. Uh, this, let's say, the big church was considered uh, to be from the 10th or the 11th century. But what happened in the north wall of this church? There is this other remain of an older church. And we realize this is, is different because the fabric of the wall is different. So it could this mean it's older than the 10th century, it could be older than, than uh, it could be also uh, um, uh, uh, in the eighth uh, in the in the 9th century. And um but we, we don't know. So it's it we can say it could be older than it's we know it's older than the than the than the other part. This is just logic. And um how would you realize this? Uh we'll show some photos after, but we have uh, the wall. This is is just different. The corners, the the this north um east corner is just different. The the cornerstones, the coins is just different than the other three. And um then the smaller charge, the charge two, looks very similar to the fabric of the green face, let's say from charge one. Also the corners are all the same. And uh, then we have the third, uh, the third face, that's the pink one, when the chancel was added. It is uh, around the 12th century. Uh, why would not this? Because well, it's older than the green one. It was have to broke the east wall to in, to insert the 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 chancel, and uh, we see this in construction themes and also stylistic 
And uh, then there are the two little two windows on the south. They are inserted windows, so they are not in the original fabric of the wall. We can see it, and they look very similar to the east wall uh, window in the smaller church, in the second church, and it looks very similar to the east window in the third church. This third church doesn't have points, doesn't have the, these corner stones, and constructed. This is constructed just this, the fabric is different than the from the others. The entrance is on the south, which is also had a, a, a meaning, and uh, is differently orientated, and it's outside the, the central area. Then we have a last phase till now, uh, phase four, which is uh, um, probably was a rare roofing of the building. And so we have uh, the gutter line is new, and we have a uh, a mural crown going over the level of the heaves and it's pretty well preserved in the south part. And this could be 15th or 16th century. And there is very a very similar phase in Corcomro Abbey with this, the same construction of the gutters and from this time. So we, we can make links there. Um, I just got a bit more detail from the church one. We see this now as a, as a plan. And the blue one will be the old church. We can even, it's possible that there was the, the length of the first church. So the, the second church was three or four times bigger than, than, the first, than the first church. And here we have the north wall. And I don't know if you can recognize any, any differences. And I made just this, the, I marked the construction scene and maybe you realize here, like it's constructed differently. We have this, big stones they are not really big they are just plates place it um age wise to look very big like the one on the bottom in the middle with a very straight end and maybe this is really the end of the of the first charge the, the west the northwest corner of the first charge and also the stones are finely tools and so um uh, work it that they fit in each other and you see on the other side the wall looks very different they don't have they are not using this this they're not taking the uh they're not trying to impress with the size of the stones and then instead to to tooling the stones to fix with each other they just introduce little stones to make them fit uh in the inside are, is the same it looks very similar and we, you, you see here on the east wall of the the east wall of the nave has been broken for the arch for the chancel and so we have the like different phases here it will be this and if you look you see more or less the construction sims we need a more detailed analysis to know exactly where these things were sims were but I'm in a preliminary for you uh, uh, so this is more or less, and it could be even more complicated than that. I don't know, for instance, if the gables, the top of the gables probably will modify a couple of times. Maybe there is a green face on the gable or the top is completely orange, I mean, from the last phase. Um, as I said, we need a more detailed analysis to know it in more detail, but uh, this is this is uh, it's a good start and a good orientation for that. So what was the settlement at Otmama? We, we have seen there are many elements which are um, comparable to monasteries, Irish monasteries, but even this is not clear what it was a monastery. Uh, in a monastery will live monks and nuns. And what is a monk and a nun? It's a person who live after a rule. Do the people have a rule who live in, in Otmama? We don't know. Um, McKinney say there were a small uh, ecclesiastical sites that served uh, king groups. So maybe the O'Briens, uh, they were the donors, the patrons of this settlement and members of this family will be uh, ecclesiastics, uh, will be bishops or will have uh, other um, uh, offices in this place. And these little churches will uh, um, uh, be uh, for them and it will be little sanctuaries and, and so on. 
um, why there's a, is a, is a chancel coming in, in the uh, in the 13th century or at the end of the 12th century. Uh, um, there is a discussion among scholars why when the chancels came to Ireland is because of liturgical, there is a liturgical reason for that, or it's just a fashion that at once this, the churches start to be constructed in, in this way. Um, then we have the position of the of the doors, uh, the, the, the old Irish churches, the early Irish churches have an entrance on the west, and at some point they start to have an entrance on the south. Not, not only that, is if you have been in Tognaval or have been in um, Drumaco, you will see that the old door has been walled up and a new door has been inserted in the south. So it's a relation with, they have a relation with the uh, reform of the Irish church. And of course, when the sister, when the, when the, um Cistercians came into the valley. There was uh, a turning point for for the Otmama monastery. We can only speculate about the consequences of this. Of this, but the, the Cistercians came in a moment of of, of also of uh, church reform, uh, Anglo Norman invasion. So the things were changing in Ireland, and the settlement at Otmama everything changes for them. And we don't know if the, the Cistercians absorbed them uh, when they settled there because there was something there because of the meal. Um, by now it's a speculation, but we have now little, it's a puzzle. We are we're collecting the little pieces and putting them in place. Another important question is why is this monastery? Why was it there? I think we have seen that there are different reasons for the monastery to be here. First, we have the economic reasons. We have this fertile valley, uh, proximity to the sea, uh, um, a road, an important road. I mean, it's super, super important also. And um, the meal, because we have water there and the possibility to install a meal, which is not easy in the Warren because there are not many rivers. And, um, so there are economic reasons they are there, but we have also symbolic a symbolic uh, reason. Uh, this landscape was is loaded with symbolic meanings. We have the the, the boundary. We have Turlock Hill, and uh, and when we have these elements, the symbolic elements, economic elements, we have to add uh, the political element, of course, because it's all interrelated. So if there were the O'Briens or other families. They will be also interested in keeping their places, keeping their burials there, and keeping their um, uh, um, their monuments to preserve their uh, and to show they will have been always there, and um, to keep supremacy in this in this and control over the area. And we have Kokom Ruavi will be just the the next um, uh, element on this in this chain. Uh, the if uh, uh, my main message for this talk for you is uh, to look at the landscape because we cannot understand uh, we cannot understand the settlement at Odd Mama or Corcoran Roavi or Turlock Hill without looking at the landscape, the natural uh, landscape uh, and the other elements and we have to preserve that. So if we don't take care of the of the middle race, for instance, they will disappear. And this is such an important element for the interpretation of the whole rest. Uh, so it's, it's just um, crucial. So I'm looking forward for your questions. I say thank you for the moment. And uh, uh, just let me know what you think. Thank you, Salwina. It was wonderful. I can see the <clears throat> I can see the work that you've put in trying to study this place and and put put uh, figures and time scales and interpret interpret the kind of um, settlement that uh, existed in Ukmama. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, put them into the Q and A section or the chat button. Um, I might start with. One of the first questions I had when you were showing me the mill race, showing us the mill race, 
uh, it's hard to imagine there being a lot of water. I know it's a watery landscape and we've seen it, uh, water underfoot. Uh, but was there more water then, do you think, to I power a, a mill? <laughs> This, the, this is the, the thing nowadays where it's very difficult to imagine how they did it because the terrain there is, is difficult and you don't see how they can collect water, but the mineral race is there and you can go and see it. It's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, it is that, a yeah. mineral race, so it must be. There is no other, other possibilities, only maybe there was more water. You know, mm -hmm. we were speaking of many years ago. We can thousand years ago and maybe there was more water. I mean this this change is natural and and maybe the the, the water there was more water there at the time uh, more than now. So uh yes. And what is your interpretation of why the churches they were obviously built on over a period of time, but why would they be built so close together? Is there a reason? Well we have in other uh Irish monasteries, we have many churches. It's, it's just a typical characteristic of Irish, monast Irish monasteries. And the two churches, the central ones, they were originally not so close together because the chancel was not there. So there was more space between the two churches. And then in the moment they add the chance, then it it's became a bit more crowded, the, the whole thing, yes. Mm. And what do you, what was the, I know you mentioned the Corkum Row Abbey in relation to this, that uh, it came subsequent to Uthmama. Um, Do you think there was any interaction between the two or the Uthmama settlement had probably finished up by then? And we don't know, but uh, we know that in the time that the, the Cistercians came, they came with a reform of the Irish church. So the Irish Church had to be reformed. It was the was the Vatican was thinking all Europe is under one rule with all the they were trying to do everything the same, but the Irish are still doing their thing. And the monasticism in Ireland was completely different than the Benedictine monasticism from Europe. So the Cistercians represent a new era in the church. The, their monks will do completely different things than the Irish monks. Uh, Talibasi, for instance, or or um, they were enclosed. They, they, the Cistercian monks will not leave their monasteries. They will not see a person. They will. This is a completely un, uh, different idea. There was the the new the new monasticism. So the the this, the church, the central uh, Christian church, was trying to implement this also in Ireland and to get rid of this old form of monasticism. So it must to be a the clash there must be a, a conflict and we don't know but it's possible if we have the same donors we have the same O'Briens that were um um granting uh the Cistercians and 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 at the same time the the Otmama, then you have maybe there uh there um there were conflicts or if the Cistercians if the Cistercians will take uh the meal for instance or if the the monastery another possibility is like the monastery stop to be a monastery or the monks the Irish monks become Cistercian monks to adopt the new rule and uh, the old mama churches became eventually or at least a big one uh, um, a parish church. Okay. So yeah. I mean in a in a such a, in such an old building I mean the history it's the uses and it is possible also that there were. Uh, not used for 20 years, 50 years, the church was falling down and then they reconstructed it because they have more population and and they will explain the the repairs and the new the re-roofing in the 16th, 17th, 16th, 15th century. So it's but it's uh, yeah we kind of speculate only. Yeah, fantastic. I'll just go to the comment. Martin Murphy says great talk. Where is the access to the site? Well, you go um, to well the Corker Pass, and then there is there a road, and you have to let the car somewhere there, and you have to walk. Yeah, uh, you have to walk. Actually, you you, you have to walk. The owners uh, they are very tolerant, and and so on, and it's even a path you can you can use, but it's not so easy. You have to be at least it's like forty minutes walk until you come there, and you have to know more or less where it is. Yeah, 
So you can walk on to the, the tower shield, uh, tower common, uh, and then go down to the to the monastery and see the yeah. Um, Fenula is asking. That was wonderful. Thank you. What date was the OSI map from? This is eighteen twenties. I mean, nineteenth century. Good. Um, Roshino Lachlan is asking, was Uktmama a Celtic monastery before the Cistercians came in 12th century? I think you answered that. Well, well the Cistercians came not to Uktmama. The Cistercians come 1.5 kilometers. Yes. Uktmama, yes. Uh, well, as I say, I don't know if it was a monastery. No, but I know if it was a monastery, but there were ecclesiastical living there, taking care of and other people living there. So let's say like a monastic, yeah, the, all the yeah. signs point to a monastic sort of and setting. We don't know if it was active, but probably was active when the Cistercians came. Okay. Um, John Lamb is asking, do you know if there are any plans to do an archaeological dig at Uktmama? No. No, no, no plans to make a dig. <laughs> Would but you like to see that happen? Would you like? Yes. It, at least, I mean, this is a huge complex and so on, but at least it would be it would be nice to to do it in in at in the areas to see if the, we see the old church the first there's this blue the blue face uh, yes this will be a, a small excavation we could do would be nice yeah um rena is asking can you explain what is the spolia oh sorry yes uh spolia is when you use um is the reuse or recycling of uh, architectural elements so the door, the, the the I think I forgot to explain that the original door of the first church was reused in the second phase. So you just take the stones and 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 reuse it again. And and these stones were not mortared. The church was mortared. So they used mortar to put the stones together on the wall, but the the entrance is not mortared. The stools are so the, the stones are very smooth too, though they they just lie on, uh, on each other. So you can demontage them easily, well, easily, and put it again there. And probably there was the entrance of a very, very a strong symbolic meaning for the first charges. And maybe there was the reason that after the reform, they get, got rid of these entrances and put this on the, on the south side. That's very interesting, the changing of the doors. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Lilia is asking, would there have been inhabitants and a settlement at Uqmama in Neolithic times? Maybe. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know. It is possible because if you have water there, maybe we're, we're people living there. But without without um, an excavation or, or other kind of uh, archaeological uh, introspection, we cannot know. Yeah, it's hard to believe there wouldn't be because if the Turla Kill was so close by and if that was such a significant site, you'd imagine that the valley was used yes. in some way, you know. And uh, uh, there is no, it's not a good place to live on the top of Turla no, no. So probably it was not only for rituals and other kind of, you know, you know symbolic acts, but not to live over there, yeah. Um, Mary Lillis is asking, do you think the third church was once inside the enclosure? If you've already answered this, don't worry. I heard someone suggest some years ago that the third church was for women only. Spec yeah. Well, we can speculate. This, there, there is an other monasteries. You, you have in Glendalough, for instance, that we have many churches and you have the nuns church, so only for women and so on and so on. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it worked for other groups. Maybe they discriminate women at the yeah. time. Wouldn't be surprising. And they will have their own church. Or there was um, a sanctuary for a particular saint. And that's why it's orientated differently because it will reflect the date of the sun when the when the sun is coming from the side and the uh, Yes, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. do you think there's no evidence of it being having been inside a boundary, inside an inside the enclosure at some point? Um, uh, it's inside one of the enclosures, but outside the central enclosure, and it's just so far away from the others and, yeah, and different yeah. orientated. So it's uh, it was always treated differently. Yeah, possibly. Look like this. Yes. 
<laughs> Roshin says, you're, uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Your enthusiasm is infectious, sign of a great teacher. <laughs> and, um, that's for sure. Um, Finola is asking, was the first church built at the same time as Kilmaktua? We don't have a, a date really for for the churches. Uh, as I say, we don't have a complete analysis, and uh, I'm so happy that I I I I got this this little this this uh, extra an older construction phase. Mm -hmm. um, but they will be and uh, they will be uh, from the time. I mean, they are all uh, early. Irish monasteries. So, mm -hmm. and all these monasteries, they have also many construction periods. Like, as I say, this it's believed that the first constructions were made of wood, and then they make another church, and then another, and so on and so on. And this, and, and we have to think in thousand year, years. So the 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 use of the churches changes also. The religion changed. The people changed. The the um beliefs changed. So, yeah. Uh, Bridget, Bridget, Bridget yeah, is asking, would it have been wooded all around at that time? Um, there was a wood on the other side and on the railway side. There was this, this uh, as mentioned, uh, and um, and probably it's the thing is there are some Poland records, but they are. Um, is uh, the time periods given by this by this uh, analysis is just thousand years and and it's difficult to know how was but it's a very interesting question how was the landscape at this time and uh, we see photos from from the 19th century or early early 20th century is just the void of vegetation it's not not only not trees there's no bushes it's just stones and stone walls and 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 green, and um, I, well, I suppose it's green, but uh, um, like mm, grass and and stone walls, and it's nothing there. So, um, but probably there were more uh, woods, uh, hazel woods, and so on uh, at this time because they needed wood. Uh, they needed wood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For construction and stuff. And mm -hmm. and just a question for myself, um, Sylvina. I know you've been studying this place for a while. What do you think your study is going to bring, uh, like a new understanding about this place that hasn't been there before? What was the big, uh, big learning for you, if it's possible to simplify that in a few lines? Well, first of all, uh, the relationship between the different monuments in the valley, and it's what is my my PhD about is the landscape, the landscape of uh, of, uh, of the area. So it's a, it's another perspective. We we don't concentrate in the buildings, uh, but in the in the in the whole landscape. So you consider other elements, and so that the Corcoran rabbits does not appear in there. It's there because there was something there before, and um, and also to um, integrate in the in in our analysis the impact of the landscape. It's very subjective because you cannot prove what the people will feel when they come in a certain place. But every visitor coming to the Boring will be impressed, is impressed by that. And if you walk by yourself on the hills and so on, you will feel different. You feel things when you're there, have a desert component. This is a very special landscape. And it's very sweet for monasteries because they, they, they monasticism was always attracted by this, by the desert, because the first, monks were the desert fathers and mothers monks and and were not called nuns but they were also women living by themselves in the in the desert they start to group together and so so is how monasticism started so the idea of the desert is is always there and and i think it's not a coincidence to have monasteries in in the Buran in this in this area and also, Otmama has been a bit, there are so many sites in, in Ireland, it's, uh, the Buran is also so rich, and the research has concentrated mostly in uh, prehistoric monuments, because it's older, and it's very impressive, and so on, and we have nothing about Otmama, so I'm very excited about this, this new construction phase, for instance, and the relationship 
uh, all the, the spectrum it can uh, with the interaction with the cock and Roavi and how the things change and, and especially also how was for the people living there. Um, yeah. Just to imagine the the how they will feel when they they were used to this kind of monasteries and then come the, the Cistercian is completely different and this wall and 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 this very strange monks and so on and. Yes, this is exciting, yeah. Absolutely. Um, maybe with just the last question now, uh, Mary is asked, uh, any burials on the site? It was an excellent there lecture. Is, there are some um, um, uh, slabs uh, in the church, but there have no inscriptions. So we don't know if they are for burials, maybe. There is some uh, descriptions uh, from uh, historians that there were uh, slabs there with uh, Irish inscriptions or with crosses and so on, but they are not there. So, okay. and we don't have any pictures or drawings or anything. So we have only, yes, that they, they say they were, maybe they was they were brought somewhere else. And, but there is uh, once um, a human jaw was found, uh, I think a rabbit dig it out and it was buried again. But this is a notice about about the being a, so probably probably I mean yeah. next to churches there are always burials or inside on a, and and yes yeah yeah okay so I think that 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 brings us to the close of of this talk there isn't um, uh, any more questions so Silvina thank you so much and we've recorded your webinar and we'll put it up on our YouTube channels for um, anyone who who missed it today. But uh, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll organize um, a walk and a visit at yeah, uh, Mama you. with you, so, uh, which will be fantastic. So thank, thank you for taking the time today. And um, thank you for uh, have, have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.